Welcome back to the 30th anniversary Corbell American Ski Classic from Vail, Colorado. We're watching the Corbell Ford Cup where our legends of ski racing are now the captains of the celebrity teams. That's Mark Giardelli coaching his team and last night he was given the Legend of Honor Award. When all is when said all and is done, done, Mark Giardelli may be the most gifted all-around skier in the modern Alpine era. However, his, the the era. his road However, to the top featured just as many twists and turns as any World Cup course he ever conquered. Twists and turns as any World Cup course he ever conquered. Skiing by the age of five and racing at seven, Giardelli honed his talents, his talents at the famed ski school in Schruns, near his home in Lustenau, Austria. Like all like young mountain boys, boys, he dreamed of dreamed growing, of growing up, up to become a ski racing star for Austria. That dream took, took a dramatic U-turn during the winter, winter of 1976. 1976. While Mark well, yearned to represent his country, country, he also wanted to be coached to be by his father, by his father Helmut. Helmut. Following a Following disagreement with the Austrian with the Federation, Federation over the attention his son was receiving, the elder Giardelli made an historic, historic choice. choice. Instead, Instead of fulfilling his dream to represent Austria, Mark would, would race for the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, a small mountainless country with no tradition in winter sports. Now so he could race in a World Cup, but the transplanted Austrians would have to wait nine years before he could FIS represent events, his adopted country in Austrian Olympic or World Championships. The nine years to receive a passport and the ability to represent his adopted country in Olympic or World Championships competition. Tim, the early 80s also signaled the beginning of a streak of injuries that would hamper him the remainder of his career, including 14 knee injuries, one so severe that renowned surgeon Dr. Richard Stedman even said that it was the worst he had ever seen. He entered the World Cup winner's circle in 1983, capturing the slalom in Galavar, Sweden, marking the first of 46 career wins. The following winter, Giardelli dominated the World Cup slalom rankings, recording five wins and the disciplined Crystal Globe while finishing third in the overall standings. The winner of 84-85 produced 11 wins and his first overall World Cup crown, beating his fierce rival, Pierman Zerbregen of Switzerland, by just 18 points in the season-long rankings. Tata was also the winner in which Giardelli finally received Luxembourgian citizenship, and that allowed him to compete in the World Championships in Bormio, Italy, where he captured the silver medal in slalom and a bronze in giant slalom. He claimed his first world's gold medal in 1987 in Cromontana, Switzerland, a win in combined. The 88-89 season saw Giardelli win races in all five disciplines, the first racer to ever achieve this feat in a single season. In that same winter, he captured the combined gold medal at the 1989 World Championships here in Vail and Beaver Creek, while also earning a silver in the slalom. In 1993, Giardelli rewrote the World Cup history books one more time, earning his fifth overall World Cup Crystal Globe, a record yet to be equaled on the men's side. Tim, I'll never forget when Mark announced his retirement from the World Cup in the middle of the 1997 season after 17 years on the tour, leaving the sport with 46 individual victories and five overall titles, in addition to a pair of Olympic silver medals and 11 championship medals, four of them gold. I'm really proud to be here and, uh, among so many friends and um, I have to tell you also that um, I like to li like to see this movie I always win <laughs> and I think a lot of important people are sitting here in Vail in this room and that's why it is for me coming to Vail is like coming home thank you very much <clears throat> That really was a great night in honor of a truly great ski racer. Well, back to the celebrity ski racing, where we caught up with Days of Our Lives actor Justin Melby. I don't know, it looks a little firm. <laughs> it looks uh, skiable, firm. I think everyone's gonna get down pretty good today. Fast, fast course. Justin was actually a competitive skier on the Australian ski team before he arrived in Hollywood, but here he tries a little too hard, takes one of the biggest spills of the whole weekend. It was a yard sale. It sure was a simple mistake, and it turned into a crazy fall. He just came off his edges, just lost his grip, but then when he plowed through the gates, that's when the skis came flying off. <laughs> that was wild, but he was all right. My name is Giancarlo Esposito. I'm from Connecticut, out here in the Vale Valley. To Cut it up. Oh, hey, welcome back. 
Giancarlo nominated for an Emmy for his role in the hit series Breaking Bad. He raced against Olympic swimmer Steve Lundquist, who has these two goals. Uh, don't fall, don't kill myself. Lunk the hunk, he's a big boy, he gets the advantage out of the gate. Giancarlo Esposito had to chase him. And Tim, I take a lot of pride in the fact that Giancarlo Esposito was one of my students many years ago, his first time racing here in Vail, and he's come a long, long way. I tell you, he is pretty fast. Back at the top, Andy's with Olympic gymnast Trent Demas. Well, every year I pretty much do a little bit of gymnastics on the way down. This year I'm hoping to go past the finish line, except this year not on my back and not going backwards and head first. <laughs> and man, we have seen some pretty amazing gymnastics from our celebrities and amateur racers the last two days. Let's take a look at some of the best spills. Well, I was lucky enough to have some advice to get my skis turned, so I think my skis are doing pretty good. Whether or not I'm doing that good is another story. <laughs> Carol Lewis, the track and field star, who also ran bobsled for the U.S. team, she loves it here. She's been coming for several years to this event, wound up living here. So she's improved her skiing a lot. And she has a good run down here, taking advantage of her handicap and wins a point quite handily for her team. So you already lost our first two? Yes. Oh, first good. three. Huh? First three. First three we've lost? Oh, yeah. Son of a... So no pressure. No you pressure. You need to win this. All right. <laughs> so Patrick Warburton getting some last minute advice from his captain, Olympic slalom gold medalist Finn Christian Yage. Patrick went up against Jay Hamill from Volvo, and I like the way he had the courtesy to let our event sponsor win. Good stuff. <laughs> a very smart man. And earlier today, Volvo CEO John Maloney took our Swedish Ladies Legends champion Ilvan Owen for a spin in one. Here we are in, in another great Swedish product, uh, the Volvo XC60R design. And this is a great car. It's obviously world-class safety because it's a Volvo but it's got great design and it is one of the two most powerful Volvo ever. So this has got 325 horsepower, 357 pound-feet of torque off of a six-cylinder turbocharged engine with really all the latest, greatest safety features that you would expect from Volvo. We love it for a couple reasons. One, uh, it's a good fit for Volvo. Uh, if you think about what Volvo stands for, the environment, caring, uh, the Vail Valley and Vail Valley Foundation are very much uh, representative of those values. Uh, we like the American Ski Classic also. because So no surprise, the Swedish star loves the Swedish car. And next we'll be coming back to more from the Fourth Liberty Cup. The consolation round will feature Hawk Helmets against Team Vail Beaver Creek and the championship, Team Volvo against Triumph Development. Hi, I'm Ryan Sutter, and don't go anywhere. There's more American Ski Classic coming up.